So the aliens steal all the talent from some of basketball's greatest players. We're fine. It's just some psychosomatic deal or something to do with the moon or the lime of the planet. Wow, it looks like they took their acting talent too. It stinks. So the aliens become giant monsters which the Looney Tunes can't possibly defeat. So they get the help of Michael Jordan and his wormy little assistant played by Wayne Knight, who I was surprised to find out is not a cartoon character. Oh yeah? Who says? So the game is on, and all the Looney Tunes join forces to stop the evil aliens in a universal Space Jam. Which still sounds strange to me, I don't know. When I think of Space Jam, I think of that stuff they used in Spaceballs to block out the radar. Raspberry. So all your favorites are there for the lineup, including Bugs, Daffy, Porky, Taz, Elmer, Lola, Tweety, Marvin the- WAIT A MINUTE! <laughs> Who the fuck is Lola? Oh, wait, 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 I remember from the classic Lola cartoons. You know, with the... and the... Who the fuck's Lola? Lola, turns out, is a girl bunny they created to bring in more of the female demographic. Unfortunately, they didn't really make her fun, silly, goofy, or zany. In fact, they didn't give her any personality at all. They just tried to pose her off as some sort of strange sex symbol. Which is kind of weird, because she is, in fact, a rabbit. She's not a person, she's a rabbit. If it was a person, maybe it would make a little bit more sense to make her a sex symbol, but she is, in fact, a rabbit. Why would anyone want to fuck a rabbit? What sense does that make? Rabbits aren't sexy, rabbits are food! I mean, look at her. They dress her in skimpy clothes, they make her wear short shorts. Oh, and here's the biggest insult of all. They actually gave her bunny boobies. Bunny boobies! I mean, what kind of sick, twisted pervert actually gives a cartoon character bunny boobies? I mean, if that Hoss and Pepper hussy actually has female genitalia, what does that mean the other Looney Tune characters have? Oh, we've got balls! Stop! Stop! Okay, all right, let me make one thing perfectly clear to all you Warner Brothers representatives out there. We don't want to fuck bunnies. I can't believe I have to say this. We don't want to fuck bunnies. I mean, we're people. Therefore, we like to fuck other people. I'm sure there's some small percentage of people out there that like to fuck bunnies, but that hardly seems like a very profitable demographic. I mean, I put it to you. Have you ever seen a bunny that you actually had the hots for? THAT DOESN'T COUNT! <laughs> okay, so aside from promoting bestiality to kids, the film also has the worst camera shots in the entire world. That is to say, they're all extreme close-ups. Seriously, I feel like all the characters in this movie are about to French me. These shots are so close, I keep thinking the camera's gonna hit them in the face, like in the opening of Aladdin. Too close. A little too close. So all the Looney Tune characters, Bugs, Daffy, Taz, Ho, and so forth, pretty much get their animated asses handed to them. And trust me when I say no one is spared. Dude, did they just beat the shit out of Granny? They did! They just beat the shit out of Granny! They actually tackled, punched, and kicked an innocent old lady who never harmed anyone in her life! Can I see it again? One more time. Oh my god, I could watch that forever. But unfortunately, the movie continues, and it turns out that Michael Jordan and his Looney Tunes are actually short one player. Who could they possibly get? Aw, oh, no, Bill! What are you doing? You still got a career to lose! Perhaps I could be of some assistance. Go! Get out! There's still time! Look, you made it through Larger Than Life, and you made it through The Man Who Knew Too Little, but I just don't think you can survive this! This is why I was born. Okay, I'm gonna give you the name of a director here, a uh, Sofia Coppola. She's kind of a newcomer, but she has a lot of promise. Just, just think about it. Very funny. Of course it comes down to a tied game, and it's up to Michael Jordan to score the final point. But, in a stunning turn of events, they actually don't win. They lose the game, defining all cinematic conventions. Michael Jordan finds out that he is an imperfect human being, a fallen hero. He discovers the burden and responsibility that having such great power requires. But he also finds that strength comes from the mind and soul, and not just from athletic accomplishments. And though not the happiest ending, the film teaches children that even in their darkest moments, you can always find unity in yourself. And that, my friend, is the essence of all mankind. Nah, just kidding, he makes the basket and wins. So the Looney Tunes get Michael back home, give the players back their talent, and return to being their phenomenally unfunny selves. But Jordan still has one last thing to settle. Now you know he doesn't play basketball anymore. You know, he probably doesn't even have it anymore, guys. 
It's only one way to find out. Welcome back, Michael Jordan! Oh, I see. It's because of the Looney Tunes that Michael Jordan came back to basketball. Ah! <laughs> could this movie possibly be considered good? And you wanna know what the amazing thing is? This movie actually had four writers. Four writers! And not one of them knew that they were writing intergalactic pig shit. I mean, can you imagine what the writing session with these four morons was like? I see aliens. I also see Michael Jordan being sucked down a golf hole to win a basketball game against Bugs Bunny. Actually, that explains a lot. That's it. We're out of here. I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. God, what a bad movie.